All right, so in this video, we're going to look at percentage of Americans who suffer from diabetes, right? So about 6.3% of Americans suffer from diabetes, and we're going to analyze random samples of 2,000 people. So let's think, you know, a school size of 2,000 kids, or a, a town that has 2,000 people in it, or, or whatever, some other group of people that is 2,000 in size, right? Um, or it could be, or, or you could look at, you'd be thinking like, okay, what about if, if I pick, you know, 2,000 men uh, versus 2,000 women or 2,000 kids versus 2,000 el uh, elderly folks or something like that, you know. So anyway, um, so we're going to start off, calculate the mean standard deviation. We've done this a few times, so I hope you will all um, please press pause on the video, get the mean and standard deviation yourself and then I will do it with you. But I want you to press pause and try to do it yourself, try to figure it out, and then play the video and check your answer. Sorry. It was one okay. question. Okay, so so I'll do it now. I hope you've all, everyone watching from home, you've all pressed pause and try it yourself. So the mean is the same thing. If, if the population is 6.3% suffer from diabetes, we would expect that on average 6.3% uh, of, two, of, of groups of 2,000 people would also suffer from diabetes. And I'm actually going to calculate 0 0.063, 6.3% of 2,000. And that is, um, uh, let's see, is that 126, right? So if you calculate that, you'll find, we. if I pick a random... 2,000 people, I expect about 126 to have diabetes. The only thing is, like, and, and so that is to be expected. I think that, that part makes makes intuitive sense. But the only question now is, okay, so, like, you can't expect that like, every time you pick 2,000 people, they're, like, exactly 126 of them are going to have diabetes. Like, it could be, you know, 100 of them, or it could be 150, or it could be 111, or it could be, like, 124 or but but what we want to know is like you know what what's unusual what's unusually high or unusually low so so that's really important. so that's why we need the standard deviation to tell us what's a big deal and what's not a big deal what's unusually high and unusually low so um, press pause and calculate this formula if you haven't done so yet okay I'm going to do it now, and I hope you press pause and try it at first, but P is just 6.3 in this formula. We just get the square root of 6.3 times 100 minus 6.3, you know, all over N, and N is our sample size 2,000. And on the calculator, that's parentheses 6.3, parentheses 100 minus 6.3, uh, close parenthesis, divide by 2,000, and don't forget to close the parenthesis for the calculator. And what does that turn out to be? You haven't even done it. 0.54. What's that? 0.54. 0.54, lovely. Okay, and we need one or two decimal places here. Two. Oh, okay. Rounds are to do decimal places. All right, so this should all work out to be 0 0.54, right? So now for the fun part, um, we're going to draw a bell curve. Draw a little bell curve here. And the cool thing about the central limit theorem is no matter what we're studying, as long as we study group if we study groups of things like or especially big groups like especially over size 40 um or more then you know you can almost it, then they will be normally distributed so like if you, as long as you're studying big groups of things you're going to have a normal distribution which is great because now we can use our knowledge of normal distributions to analyze like so many things in the world that's a very powerful concept so Here's our standard deviation. In the middle is the mean. And then over here is one standard deviation. And just as you get to the tail, that's two standard deviations. That's mu plus two standard deviations over there. And then over here, that's um, uh, the mean minus two standard deviations. 
and this is just the mean minus one standard deviation as this is the mean plus one and and the most important thing about the norm distribution and i'm going to beat this to death once again is that in between here and here and i didn't this should be the same height I, I, this is not a brilliant drawing sorry about that but 95 percent of our observations are going to fall within two standard deviations of the mean 95 percent will it will be within here and here 95 percent, and so you can see the area under the curve 95 percent of the area is between here and that means you got five percent spread out here and here so that's supposed to be two and a half percent here and two and a half percent here and by the way if i drew this better this would come down a little bit more and that might be up a little higher but these are supposed to look the same so in any case um same thing again and our mean is um 6.3 so I guess I'll put that there. And our standard deviation is 0 0.54. So if I add 0.54, I get uh, onto one standard deviation above, I get you know 6.84. Um, and if I net add on another one, it's 8.8. 8, that's um, uh, 7.38, right? I think so. Yeah. So here I've just got, um, uh, let's see, 6.3 plus 2 times 0 0.54, and that's 7.38. So that is just taking the mean and adding two standard deviations to it to get the upper usual limit, 7.38. And then I'm going to take, you know, 6.3, I'm going to subtract 0 0.54, and I get 5.76, right? And that's that's one standard deviation down here, that's 5.76. And then I'm going to take, uh, you know, 6.3, and I'm going to subtract two standard deviations, and I'm going to get 5.22, whoops, sorry. Subtract two standard deviations, you get to 5.22. 5.22. And I can't help beating this to death because what do these mean? 6.3% uh, of 2,000 is 126 people. So when we look at, when we analyze random samples of 2,000 people, we expect that uh, 126 out of 2,000 will have diabetes. And then... Up, up until 7.38%, these are the percentages up here, percentages, right? And, um, let's see, uh, 0 0.0738 times 2,000 gives this number, 147.6, I'm just going to call it 148, 148, doesn't have to be exact, by the way, it's fine. And then I'm going to take 5.22% of 2,000. So I'm going to go 0 0.0522 times 2,000. And I get 104.4, right? So that's 104 people. So this is me beating it to death. To make the point that when you take random samples of 2,000 people, you would expect between 104 and 148 to have diabetes you with me yeah all right so that means that if you took a random sample of 2,000 people and more than 148 of them or more than 7.38 percent of them had diabetes we would call that what unusually high oh, unusually high perfect unusually high and if we took a random sample of 2,000 people like in a in a particular town and we found that in that town of 2,000 people less than 104 of them had diabetes we would call that unusually low oh, unusually low and why is it that um, that why is it that it, it it is this way that's just the way the world the world has agreed for some reason that 95 if you're in in the 95 percent range in the middle here that's considered usual or normal or not, or not unusual, usual, or not a big deal.
But if you're down here, you're, you're, you're down here or you're up here, that's a big deal, right? And so now we can answer any question that's thrown at us. So let's see, what question is thrown at us? Um, how unusual would it be for a sample to show 7% suffering from diabetes? So they're just asking it for 7%. So where does that fall? It's about here. So this is six. This is six point three percent. That's seven point three eight. This is six point eight four. So it's about here, right? Yeah. We got seven percent there. And how do we characterize? How do we describe that? What What does that mean? If this If the group was seven percent with diabetes. But it would not be unusual. Correct. Seven percent with diabetes. By the way, that's 140 people, because if you take 7% of 2,000, you get 140 people. 140 people out of 2,000 would be described as not unusual. Why? Because it's within two standard deviations, standard deviations of the mean. Done. Make sense? Yes. By golly. So yeah. When, okay, so when I was doing the textbook homework and I came across my crossroads with this particular question and I looked at your example, you had done the... Um, the Z-score. The Z-score. Sure. Let's do the Z-score. Let's do it. We'll do it and we'll make, it'll, make, it'll make sense. Here's, well, I mean, this makes sense with the, the yeah. bell. I mean, yep. but... I haven't been using the bell. I was just trying to use math. So I was doing the um, formula for that. Let's do so, the z-score formula and we'll see what we get. Plug it in. X minus mu over sigma. What, what does that give us? 7% um, minus 6.3%. Nice. 7, yeah. That's the, the, the observed value, 7, minus the mean of 6.3, all over the standard deviation of? 0.54%. Right. And for anyone that's watching from home, we calculate we, we the mean of 6.3, we calculate the standard deviation to be 0.54%. So we could answer this question with you getting our z-score, and that would give us 0.7 over 0.54. So I'm going 7 minus 6.3, and I get 0.7. I divide that by 0 0.54, and that gives me this. 1.2962, blah, blah, blah. And the question is, what does that mean? I'm going to round that to 1.3, by the way. So the question is, what does that mean? When that says 1.3. So that means we go to our z-score sheet. Yeah, you can go to the score sheet. Um, and you look at 1.3. Right. And 1.3 is 90.32. All right, let's do that. And, get and then you would subtract that from 100, which would give you 9.68, which is about 10%. All right. Right. So when I go to my Z table, uh, or... You, you should get a 1.3 corresponds to about 90. It says 90.32, but about 90 is fine. Let's just call that 90%, right? We'll call okay. it 90. And what that means is, um, what that means is we have, if you take that 7%, we have 90% under the curve down here and 10% up here. That's what that means. Let me just get okay. the focus going here. Sorry. So again, what it means is that above seven percent is ten percent of of groups of two thousand are, are up here, ten percent, and below that is ninety percent. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But we're still within the usual range, though. Right. Right. Because this, and, and, but, the, but the question is, the z-score just means the number of standard deviations, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because if your z, like, like, 
like like this is 1.3 standard deviations above the mean okay yeah so like i'll give you i'll give you all another example like like let's say they said okay you know what about like 7.38 percent how does that work out like let's get that in in let's get the z-score for this guy 7.38 percent well it's going to be 7.38 minus the mean of 6.3 over 0 0.54 what does that give us I don't have my calculator handy. That's okay. I'll do it real quick. Um, 7.38 minus 6.3 gives 1.08. You okay with that? Yep. And then I divide by 0 0.54 and I get what? Can you see that? The number 2? Two. Two? Okay. What does yep. that number 2 mean? It uh, means that we have a percentile of... Right. Talk to me about, good, good. You can find that in the table that a z-score of two corresponds to, um, a z-score of two corresponds to 97.73% or pretty much 97.5 because two and a half percent is up here. But tell me about standard deviations. What does two mean? Uh, in relation to standard deviations. Can you explain it that way? It would be right there at the very yeah. end of the standard deviation. It's right here. It is, it is exactly two standard deviations above the mean, right? Yeah. Right? So, yeah. in other words, if our z-score, if our z-score is between negative two and two, if our z-score is, is here, right, if you take your z-score and it's between negative 2 and 2, that means usual, doesn't it? Yes. Right? Yeah, because in other words, um, this end of, this end is a z-score, a z-score of negative 2, right? And this end of the usual part is a z-score of positive 2, isn't it? Yes. Right. So, so there we go. I think we've beaten it to death. Yeah. And I, I just have to, I just, I can't, I can't resist, but what if um, we visited some school in some part of the country and we found that, um, we found that 4% of the kids had diabetes. What could we say about that school? And so 4% of 2,000 is... 80 kids. So 80 kids out of 2,000, there's a, we visit a school in the country, there's 2,000 kids, and 80 of them have diabetes. What can we say about the school? That's a lot of kids that have diabetes. Is it? What's the, well, no. what's the population average? We would expect what? We would expect what and, and what did we find? I'm sorry. I'll walk you through. So we would expect 6.3 percent, wouldn't we? Uh, well, yeah. Okay. And we find that in fact it's lower. Yes. Is it significantly lower? Is it a big deal? No. Well, let's have a look. Two standard deviations down gets us to 5.22 oh, yes. percent, or 104. It would be, it would be unusually low. Right. Yes, you're but, right. But there we're. Right. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Um, you're right. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm torturing you, but I've been making you do math for hours. That's okay. That's okay. Torture away. But that's our, that's our, our, our four percent school here with eighty kids, and they're on the, the unusually low range down here. Right. And I didn't even get the Z score. I can just say it's less than two standard deviations, so it's unusually low. Right. I wasn't even looking at the top. I was looking at a whole other problem. See, and that's where my okay. problem comes in. Is you, you throw this out at me, and I'm looking at a totally different situation. So, yeah, okay. But no problem. Problem. No, okay. I, I'm sorry, you guys. I, I, I'm with you now. Yeah. It's but okay. then, but this is, it's okay, everybody. I mean, this is the pro the problem with this class. It's a challenging class because we're jumping around, we're studying so many different types of things. It's hard to keep track of it. I totally understand. No problem.